Gladness of the Prospect You are well named, Joy, because life fairly warbles with joy, and you are life on exhibition, walking to and fro in the earth. In the movies, you see glorious girls on parade, displaying gorgeous clothes. Mannequins, they are called, are they not? They just dazzle a fellow and are intended to do so. Well, you are on parade in this world, showing forth the glories of one endless life. For life insists on living and on being made visible. There is a quietness and a calmness about life, a certain indifference to any opposition or interference, because life has all the power there is, and all the presence, and well does life know this. But while life is poised and serene, it is also charged with a tremendous energy which speeds abroad in your land, making every speck thereof glow with comfort and confidence. And life never thinks of coming or going. Life is content to be, and of course to be all there is. Life has no rivals, no impediments, no fears. Whose life are we talking about? Joy's. Is she saying this and knowing it? She certainly is. She has little sense of anything but the abundance, the boundlessness, the exuberance of life. Every time any contrary suggestion comes along, she rebukes it, saying, Not wanted. Well do you know that there is nothing back of such suggestions, no mind, no urge, no will, nor is there any mentality to accept those suggestions, feel them, or experience them. The goodness of the governor of the universe is such that he could not dream of permitting one of his people to entertain a single alarm or distress. You know that right now he holds you in his ample palm and will not let anything or anybody except Santa Claus get within miles of you. Reach right down now and take hold of your bootstraps and pull yourself together. Then strut and purr and delight yourself in the everlastingness of life. I think you love God and serve Him at the very height when you have a good time and fill yourself with joy. I am sure that He has purposes for you. And that an outstanding purpose is that you shall have those years your heart desires and has desired all these years. Do not let the reformers torment you. Your name has not been entered in any black book. Hard roads and tough experiences cannot be classed among the necessities or inevitables of life. The Almighty forces you to do nothing except to have a glorious existence. Rather pleasant to be forced in this direction, is it not? Peace, home, and work, all these glories are yours as a matter of right. Nobody ever was punished or denied anything for having a good time. Do you not feel better? Life lives, actioning and functioning in hair in it. It searches every part of your economy, sustenancing, vitalizing, and strengthening every fiber. There cannot be any torpidity in life or any hindrance to its free operation in any area of your system. You were well made in the beginning and that well-madeness can never be interfered with. You are whole, sound, intact this very moment, and you feel the thrill and vigor of life to every extremity. The disorder you mention is no more than an obsession. 
Happily, it is not your obsession, but the obsession's obsession. Disown it, then. Have confidence. Have expectancy. Walk around saying to yourself, Life, the life I am living, is self-existent and uninterruptedly energetic and tranquil. You should come out of this difficulty before long, and I am confident that you will if you take the above prescription. You are bound to increase in strength and confidence, because you are recognizing hour by hour that the Almighty is in the midst of you, which means that you are admitting the almightiness of health and life itself. Mind, too, is in the midst of you, and out of mind you can gather the feel of exuberant life. This mind is of deeper perception than to cognize such impossibilities as distress or danger. It knows nothing about them. But this mind is your mind. There is no other. Stop right here and gather up the implications if you would be free. The distress you describe is a misstatement of your condition because abounding life permeates you in all its peace and invincibility. Have faith, keep up your efforts, and remember Derjavan's lines. O thou eternal one, whose presence bright all space doth occupy, all motion guide. In doing so, you will realize that the Russian has something in his system besides communism. This difficulty you describe should leave you very soon, and should never come around again. Relapse? How can it find you? It has no intelligence, no locomotion, no legs or wings. No, the ailment is an out-and-out non-entity. It is without intelligence, without power to move about, without presence, without existence. An out-and-out lie is what you should denounce it. And what are you? You are an exhibition of that life which knows nothing about restriction or distress. You are a manifestation of that life which is invulnerable and invincible. Right where those symptoms try to talk or assert themselves is a peace that cannot be disturbed. After a while, let me hear from you again. Do your best to declare these truths, and thereby give yourself a good boost. Do so many times a day. It requires only a moment. <laughs>